name is Rabbi Howard Wolk. I'm the community chaplain with Jewish Family Service in Dallas. I have the uh, privilege of working with Faith Presbyterian Hospice. And uh, I'm honored that they asked me to share a few thoughts uh, with you. Hope this finds uh, everyone well. Uh, this is being recorded uh, the week of July 4th. Uh, very significant, important date. Uh, it should uh, remind us of uh, the treasures and blessings we enjoy by living in this country, uh, this country of freedom, where we're all able to practice our faiths in whatever way and manner we we wish. Uh, it's not uh, that's not something that every country uh, enjoys. And so we should never take uh, those privileges, those obligations, and yes, those blessings uh, for granted. So however, uh, we celebrate July 4th. I hope uh, you enjoy it and that the significance of the date uh, is, uh, you know, is not obscured. Uh, in the synagogues, we're reading the fourth book of the Torah, the fourth book of the five books of Moses, the book of Numbers, uh, many different episodes, many different events in the book. Uh, we uh, read uh, recently about the episode involving the 12 spies. Uh, this is now the beginning of the second year of the Israelites being in the desert. The plan is to go directly into land of Israel, of Israel and the people come to Moses and ask that they want scouts or spies sent into the land. Uh, let's find out what the land looks like, what the people are like. So Moses turns to God with this idea, and God says, I don't need spies, but if the people want scouts, if they want spies, give them spies. Uh, God allows the people to exercise a free will. And so Moses chooses a leader from every tribe. No, not obscure individuals, but individuals who were leaders, who were respected. And Moses gives them instructions. They break up into six groups of two each. And Moses tells them to come back with a report uh, on the topography of the land, on the cities. Are the cities fortified? Do they see the nations there being powerful, uh, etc.? And the spies go into the land of Canaan. They return 40 days later with two different reports. Ten of the spies give what we call an evil report about the land of Israel. They say, yes, the land is flowing with milk and honey, but the armies there, the nations there are very powerful. The fruits are abnormally large. We cannot overcome them. We cannot conquer the land. And so the recommendation of the 10 spies is not to go into the land of Israel. The minority report is given by Joshua and Caleb. And they say, yes, it's true. The nations there are powerful, but with the help of God, we will be victorious. And Moses says, we're going with the minority report. And the Bible tells us that the people wept that night when they were told that they would definitely go into the land of Israel. And God says such a nation uh, is not equipped to build a country. And so God's punishment for the people is for each day that the spies were in the land of Israel, the people have to wander in the desert for a year, 40 days, 40 years, until that generation that left Egypt dies out. So the punishment was actually on the men, on the men only. Any man over the age of 20 at the time of the Exodus would die out in the desert. It was easier to remove the Israelites from Egypt than to remove Egypt from the Israelites. The punishment, by the way, did not apply to the women. In fact, whenever we read in the Torah that the people committing a sin, the sin of the spies, the golden calf, complaining about the lack of meat, it's always the men, never the women. And so uh, God says, you will not enter the land. But the big question is, what really motivated them to sin in such a way? Why did they give a negative report? 
And so one explanation is the spy says, look, said, look, here in the desert, all of our needs are taken care of. We're fed on a daily basis by the manna from heaven. We have a well of water that accompany us through the desert to give us water, food for uh, water for our flocks, etc. Perfect weather conditions. They're in the desert. They're not subject to the extreme heat or cold or winds. Uh, there's a, a cloud over them during the day, a pillar of fire of night to protect them from the elements. Perfect 72 degrees weather. And so the spy said, listen, if we go into the land of Israel, life will be difficult. We're going to have to conquer the land. We're going to have to build cities. We're going to have to get, get jobs, support ourselves. Let's stay here in the desert. God provides us with everything. And Maimonides, the great Jewish philosopher, rabbi, physician, explains that the people had a slave mentality. When they were in Egypt as slaves, yes, it was a very harsh existence, but all their needs were taken care of. Their masters gave them food, gave them where to sleep, etc. Now they're exhibiting that same kind of psychology a slave mentality. They want God to do for them everything, provide everything for them. And God said, I didn't take you out of Egypt to have you remain in the desert, to have you mentally enslaved. God therefore says a new generation that doesn't have those Egyptian hangups, they will go in and conquer the land. And so uh, we see one of the lessons here is that a partnership uh, in biblical view, in Jewish view, we are partners with God. In many, many things we do, we can give many examples. Uh, if a farmer prays the whole day that his crop should grow, nothing will happen. The farmer has to go out and do the work, plant and seed, water, pull out the weeds, etc. And then he has to pray. Pray that there's rain, not too much rain, not too much wind. God forbid someone is ill. Uh, most faiths take the approach of a multi-pronged attack. We give the person the best medical attention that's available. And we also pray to God that the medical expertise should help this particular patient. One approach without the other that's not the biblical way to do things. So the spies wanted to rely entirely on God. And God says, no, that's not the way life works. We are partners with God. And in all the good works that we all uh, do, uh, we're exhibiting that idea of being partners uh, with, with God. We do our share and we pray to God that our actions, our deeds should be successful, that we should uh, alleviate the pain that people are experiencing and thereby enhance uh, their lives, their existence. Thank you for your attention. Happy July 4th. Shalom. Be well.